When you hear the name of Haman. Oh, yeah. All right, I want to make sure you know what you're doing there. The grogger is very, very important. Sherry Meyer, do you think that the grogger is a religious uh, uh, ritual item? Yes, it is a religious ritual item. Yes, yes. So let it be heard. Once a year, go wild. Woo! All right. Wicked man and Haman was his name. Well, right now we're just going to sing some songs and do a little McGill. He lied and lied about the Jews, but they were not to blame, sir. Oh, today will Mary Mary be. Oh, today will Mary Mary be. Oh, today will Mary Mary be. And not some home and did anybody get some home in yet? Anybody get um, some pizza? And Esther was the lovely bride of King Ahasuerus. When Haman said he'd hurt us all, oh my, how he did scare us. Oh, today we'll marry, marry be. Oh, today we'll marry, marry be. Oh, today we'll marry, marry be. And not some home in Tashin. But Mordechai, her cousin bold, said, What a dreadful chutzpah. If bats were but invented now this Haman, I would bop, sir. How come when I said Haman, you didn't do anything? Oh, I have to reintroduce you to the concept. Hello, Grogger. Hello, Haman. Yeah, there you go. Oh, today will Mary Mary be. Oh, today will Mary Mary be. Oh, today will Mary Mary be. And that's some home and touching. Of all his cruel and unkind ways, this little joke did cure him. And don't you know we owe him praise for the jolly day of Purim. Oh, today we'll marry, marry be. Oh, today we'll marry, marry be. Oh, today we'll marry, marry be. And not some home in Tashin. Oh, once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a king named Ahasuerus, and uh, he was married to a very nice lady named Vashti, but he was not quite evolved enough for that relationship. Therefore, she found another situation that was better for her. But he grew up, and then he was lonely, lonely. Do you know how lonely he was, Eddie? So lonely. Oh, my gosh. He said, I need a queen, a nice new queen to sit beside me on my throne and if she's very nice indeed i'll give her half the things i own see he grew up and then he saw her and he said oh you are nice so very nice sweet esther won't you be my bride so here's my throne and half i own and a hundred and twenty lands beside there's a very special hat that that guy wears his name is haman <laughs> Anyway, don't tell him it's a funny looking hat. Haman's hat. Lakova, Shelly, Shalosh, Pinot. Shalosh, Pinot. Lakova, 
Shelly. Now, if you're in Go to Nishami, you know this. We've been doing this a bunch of times. Ready? La Cova Shelly, Shalosh Pinot, Shalosh Pinot, La Cova Shelly. Lule Hayulo, Shalosh Pinot, Lo Hayaze, La Cova Shelly. This time when we do it, do me a favor and don't say Cova. Just go, hmm. Ready? Mm, Shelly, Shalosh Pinot, Shalosh Pinot. Ve'im lo hayu lo shalosh pinot lo hayaze. Shali. This time, don't say kova and don't say shali. Okay? If you do, oh well. Okay, ready? Ready? Shalosh pinot, shalosh pinot. Lule hayu lo shalosh pinot lo hayaze. This time, don't say kova, don't say shali, and don't say shalosh. Just go, hmm. Ready? Hmm. 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 Pinot. Hmm. Pinot. Lule hayu lo shalosh pinot lo hayaze. Did I mess up? All right, let's do it fast. Say all the words. Are you ready? So, Lakova means hat, Shali means mine, Shalosh is three, Pinot is corners, and Schnapps is in the back. You know what I mean? One, two, three. Lakova Shali, Shalosh Pinot, Shalosh Pinot, Lakova Shali, Lule Hayulo, Shalosh Pinot, Lo Hayaze, Lakova Shali. Please stand for a royal blessing of the Megillah. Baru, and your job is to say amen. Red practice. Amen. Uh, Over here. Amen. Uh, amen. One, two, three. Amen. Very good. Baru, Hata, Adonai, Eloheinu, Melechalam, Asher Kedushan, Mitzvotav, Itzvanu, Al Mikragid, Migila. Amen. Good. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Sh'asal Yitzim La'avotenu V'imotenu Bayamim Ha'ehem Basman Hazeh Amen Oh, that was so good. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Sh'ehchianu V'kiyamanu V'higianu L'azman Hazeh Have a seat. That was so beautiful. Mary, wasn't that a nice amen? Well, you guys, once upon a time in the days of Ahasuerosh, there was a king who ruled from Hodu to Kush. And he also had a wife. Her name was Vashti the queen. And she had a banquet for the women in the royal house of Ahasuerosh. However, the king wanted the bride, his bride Vashti, to come before Ahasuerosh wearing only her crown. She said no. Let's say, you go, girl. Yeah. Anyway, the king Ahasuerosh's uh, fury subsided and he remembered Vashti and he was sad. And he said, let there be young maidens who are quite cute come before me. There was a Jewish man in Shushan, and his name was Mordechai, the son of Shammai. Everyone say, hip, hip, hooray! Mm. And he had raised her. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerosh. He encouraged her to try to be his bride. But one day, Mordechai was sitting in the king's gates, and he saw two people who tried to hurt the king. And Mordechai let the word be known. Now, in the king's palace, there was a guy named Haman. Who liked it when people would bow down to him. Who doesn't like people bowing down? Well, I don't, I don't like it. But Haman liked it very much. What do you say when you hear Haman? Where are you? All right. But Mordecai did not want to bow down to Haman because... 
He was Jewish. However, the king said, shh, the king was, the king needed some growing because he listened to Haman. And he said, Haman said, there is a certain people scattered among the peoples throughout the provinces and their laws are different from other people and they do not keep the king's laws. I think you should get rid of them and I'll do it, said Haman. Well, Mordechai heard all about this and he rent his clothes and he put on sackcloth and ashes and he told Esther that she needed to speak to the king. And she said, if the king extends, doesn't ex extend his golden scepter, then and I have not been summoned, I may die. And if I perish, I may perish. Well, one day that evening, the Esther re put pretty clothes on and stood at the inner chamber of the court's house, and he invited Haman and the king to dine, and she served them wine. That night, the king couldn't sleep, and he'd ordered the books of the records, and he found out that Mordechai had helped save his life, and he said, well, would you, shouldn't we do something for Mordechai? And then he called Haman, and he said, so what should be done for a man that the king wants to honor? And the king said to Haman, put him on a horse, put a crown on his head, give him lots of praise, except that the king said, do this for Mordechai. Well, I'll tell you, Haman built a gallow so that he could hang Mordechai. However, it didn't turn out that way. And King Ahasuerus loved Esther, and he said, my dear Esther, let it be known between you and Mordechai that the Jews may defend themselves from the evil Haman's letter. And I won't go into any more details because you're about to see a performance that will really tell you the story. But just know that the Jewish people had light and joy, gladness and honor, and it was a good day. The holiday of Purim reminds us of chutzpah and resilience. Everyone say chutzpah. <laughs> resilience. Am Yisrael Chai, the people of Israel continue to live and to thrive. It's in the key of C. Am Yisrael Chai, Am Yisrael Chai, Am Yisrael Chai. Am Yisrael Everybody, please stand up. I'd like to invite all the children that are in costume to please come up in the front so we can see your costumes. And I'm going to ask Debbie Gould to guide them up here. Everyone, clap your hands at our beautiful children. Am Yisrael Chai, 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 Am Yisrael Chai. One more time. Am Yisrael Chai, Am Yisrael. Am Yisrael Chai, Am Yisrael Chai, Am Yisrael Chai, Am Yisrael Chai. I have to see a couple more kids. We want to get.
have a unicorn about to uh, appear. And you got to see the unicorn. I'm Yisrael Chai. I'm Yisrael Chai. I'm Yisrael Chai. Oh, we got some good ones. I'm Yisrael Chai. I'm Yisrael Chai. I'm Yisrael Chai. One more time. I'm Yisrael Chai. 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 Here comes the unicorn. I'm Yisrael Chai. 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 Thank you, children, for coming on up. We're going to ask one more big sound of the groggers, and then we're going to invite you to place them under your chairs because you won't need them for the performance. So, children, uh, smile at Bruce Pat. And all your parents. This would be a photo opportunity. <laughs> all right. Um, take your groggers, pop them under your chairs. Children, get ready in the back because we're going to start in just a moment. A Megillah on the roof sounds crazy, no? But here in the capital of Shushan, you might say, every one of us reads a Megillah on the roof, trying to live out a pleasant, simple story without breaking their necks. It isn't easy. You may ask, why do we stay up here if it is so very dangerous? We stay because Shushan is our home. And how have we survived? That we can tell you in one word. Purim. Because of Hog Purim, we've survived for many, many years. Here in Shushan, Purim tells us everything. How to drink, what to eat, who to fear, who to praise. For instance, we carry around these noisy groggers and we nosh on hamantaschen. This shows our understanding of the holiday. You may ask, how did this Purim get started? I'll tell you, Congregation Beth Shalom, yes I do. You see, it's Purim, and because it's Purim, every one of us knows who we are and what God expects us to do. Who is your Sean? Bugs rolls around the palace, keeping an eye on plotters, working as a scrub, and who? To be such a beauty, it's the hero mortified. It's for us, it's for us, it's for us. Her name, I sent her on her way. I am the king of all Persia. I'll get a new wife.
circle of the king's palace, we've always had our special types. Yenta the matchmaker, Reb Nachum the beggar, and of course, most important, our beloved rabbi. Rabbi, may I ask you a question? Of course, Laban. Is there a proper blessing for the prime minister? A blessing for the prime yes. minister? May God bless and keep the prime minister far away from us. Yes. And there are others in the capital. They make up a much larger circle. His honor, constable. His honor, priest. His honor, many, many others. We don't bother them, and so far, they don't bother us. However, there was a time that Rivka and Rachel entered the Homentage contest. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't clear what the filling should be. Rivka thought prune. Rachel thought Nutella. But that's all been settled. And now we live in perfect harmony. It was prune, you know. It was Nutella. It was prune. Nutella. Prune. Nutella. Prune. Nutella. It's for Without our Purim, our lives would be as crazy as, as a Megillah on the roof. This is the month of Adar, and Purim has come along. We celebrate with food, masquerade, and song. Enjoy, enjoy, adult and child. We're allowed to drink and have a time so wild. A tale will be told of what it was to be a Jew. A fact that is boring is not true. Isaac Beshoa Singer is the author of that quote. It is a Purim story that he wrote. Faced with a powerful villain who decreed to see them dead, the Jews of ancient Persia, in the Megillah it is said, let the king know of Haman's evil plot, and before even one could draw his lot, Haman was destroyed. Esther came to the Jews' defense, but sometimes things happen that do not make sense. But we'll retell the story for your enjoyment and your pleasure. For the story of this holiday is a Jewish history treasure. Long ago in Persia, which is now called Iran, there was a royal ruler, a very powerful man. His name was Ahasuerus. And Vashti was his queen. At many a palace party, Ahasuerus could be seen. I am the ruler of all Persia and provinces by the score. The total is 127. Perhaps there are a few more. Shushan is the capital, a very lively place indeed. For here live many people of every race and creed. We have Persians and Indians, many a Jew, in, uh, Medes and Babylonians, to name but a few. The people who resided here have a happy life, but it won't be long before the Jews feel terror and strife. So Ahasuerus planned a party for each and every guest. I want this party to be one of my best. 
Vashti was permitted to have a party blast. <laughs> Little did she know that this one would be her last. The party went on for many a day and night, when finally no one could even eat one more bite. The food was so delicious, it all tasted so fine. Ahasuerus said, Serve the kingdom's finest wine. You know, I have a wonderful kingdom. I have a royal life. My rule is undisputed. I have a beautiful wife. As a matter of fact, it would please me so if Vashti's great beauty I were able to show. Zeresh, go find my wife and command her to appear. It pleases me so when her beauty is near. Queen Vashti, excuse me. I know you're partying with your gals, but Ashwaris wants to see you to show you off to his pals. Well, she became quite upset. She really showed her ire. From ranting and raving, she did not soon tire. She said, Oh, my husband's so crass and glib. Hasn't he ever heard of women's lib? Over Persia, he may spread his rule, but what he really is is a drunken fool. I am a princess of Babylon. That is my role in life. It is much more important than to simply be his wife. Who, who are you, anyway, to come barging in here unannounced? I am the queen, and I should have you bounced. I'm Zeresh. I'm Haman's lady. And your attitude is really rather shady. Now, if you don't mind, I have a message to convey. And I have a feeling it's really going to make your day. You must come now. The king awaits. And to make him angry, we all would hate. I will not obey. I will not do his bidding. Who does he think he is kidding? You really should reconsider. You really must obey. For if you don't, you'll be sent away today. You have my word. Now go tell the king. I will not be part of this macho thing. I'll go, Queen Vashti, but yeah. I go with regret. <clears throat> to think of the punishment for the actions you will get. Go. Just go. When the king heard of her refusal, his temper flared. He roared. How dare the queen disobey her husband, king, and lord? This will never, never do. I am angry and ashamed, and Vashti is to blame. I love her dearly. My love will never vanish. But sadly, I must tell you, Vashti, you are banished. <sighs> Vashti, you have caused me great heartache. So I banish you from the throne. We had no prenup. So pick up all your stuff and go. King, you're really quite disenchanting, putting me on exhibition. So I'll leave my home and pray that you will stay alone. May all your teeth on every doctor that's in town. May you learn to treat women rightly. Be gone with you and never return. You don't understand. No matter, I'm the king.
was in the king's court a man so cruel and sinister. His name was Haman of Agag, who soon became prime minister. He loudly agreed as to Vashti's fate, for he thought his daughter would become the king's new mate. The king missed Vashti. He would wail and moan. I'm the king. I should not be alone. My dear minister, if you love your king, go find a maiden to whom I can give a wedding ring. Go into the countryside. Go into the city. Find a girl who is obedient and pretty. Hurry. Do not tarry. Find the best maiden for your king to marry. Call the palace sentries, call the palace guard. We have now before us a task that's very hard. We must send at once this minute, before a moment's lost, the very royal queen finder, no matter what the cost. My king must not be lonely. He enjoys having lovely wives. And when my king is happy, we all lead better lives. Queen finder, queen finder, find me a queen. Find me a fine, slender, not me. Queen finder, queen finder, look for a queen with whom I can be seen. Queen finder, queen finder, I'll bring the crown. You bring the bride, joy will abound. happened. 
happened that in Shushan all the men were not so very bright, though some of them were able to read well and write. One of these was Mordechai, and he became a scribe extraordinaire. He also was the guardian of Hadassah, young and fair. She was an orphan baby whom Mordecai did raise for her exceptional beauty. She of times received much praise. Mordecai said, Dearest niece, when the minister sees your face, he'll race to the palace to tell the king about your beauty, your fairness, and your eyes so blue. Oh, Mordecai. But never, <sighs> never tell him you're a Jew. Uncle Mordecai, I am so shy. I hope that I'm not seen. I really don't want to be a Hasha Wares queen. But if you tell me that I must because I've hidden long enough, if he doesn't like my Jewishness, I'll just tell him tough. No, no, dear Hadassah. You must do just as I say. There are those who feel for your Jewishness. You should dearly pay. Your name will not be Hadassah, but Esther, dear, instead. Esther? In person, it means beautiful. Huh. Please. There's none to dread. And if you're the one chosen, it's meant to be. And as the palace scribe, you'll be close to me. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, of course. It was Esther he chose among the country's best. Again. Esther is the loveliest compared to all the rest. I will provide you with servants, as many as 11. Esther, dear, you will feel like this is just a bit of heaven. One day, very early, Mordechai went for his morning walk, and he overheard two guards as they began to talk. A plot to kill the king? A very evil deed. I must do something and take the lead. I'll tell Esther that the king's new wife will have to tell her husband about the plot against his life. Mordecai's deed was recorded, and the two guards had to die. Mordecai was not rewarded, but he dared not question why. Meanwhile, Haman, that nasty little man, had a little problem when into Mordecai he ran. <clears throat> you must bow down before me. On this I do insist. Your behavior is deplorable, and it must desist. Horror the horrors, he may yet kill you, Hashem. I will bow down to you, no how. I must do right by all the Jews and my God. I proclaim this here and now. But the chutzpah, he may yet give you Hashem. Who does it big shot think he is? It is a mitzvah only to pray to the one who through life and Torah live. Pharaoh said you may not go. God got the final word. of Israel, he nayeth to you, Hashem. We must rise up and fight this man. Turn him around and send him back from whence he came. Don't be frightened when we can.
want you to rise up in this government, and I want a bigger house. <laughs> Show them what you're made of. You're a man, not a mouse. You're a descendant from a famous family, thousands of years old, not some bureaucratic fool. I want everyone to honor you. And that big house, I need a heated pool. <laughs> but it's not just for us I say this, it's for the future of our land. I want my husband honored, and all of this we plan. So stand up to these Jews, make them understand. <laughs> Everybody bows, and you should do the same. Well, bow now to me. What is your name? Mordecai is my name. What makes you so sublime? Only to my God is my heart so inclined. Each time that he refused to bow, Haman's anger grew. <laughs> Jewish question now alone is mine. Tell me, what would have been so terrible if I just had a small kingdom? If I was the king here, all day long they'd bow and kiss my ring. If I was the Persian king. All would run to praise me. If I had a itty bitty crown, a yayo diddle, yayo diddle crown, I'd have a great big palace, servants by the dozen, right in the middle of the town, with robes and rings and gold dropping from my hand. There would be one top gallows just for the Jews. I don't know. I fill my yard with guards and knights and flax and ladies for the time. Just as loudly as they can. And every voice that cried out my famous name would land like a trumpet on the ears, yeah. as if. <laughs> if I were the king here, all day long they bow and kiss my ring. If I was the Persian king, all would run to praise me. If I had just an itty bitty crown, the idle diddle 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 crown, I see my wife, my Zeresh, looking like a good king's wife with a nasty little smile. Supervising meals to her heart's delight. I see her putting on airs and strutting like a peacock. Oh, what a happy mood she's in. Screaming at the servants day and night. The most important men in town will have to bow to me. Ask me to take bribes from them just to spare their worthless lives. If you please, dear Haman, oh, pardon me, dear Haman, but I will kill them in contempt, Jews I despise. Ba ba boy, boy, oh boy. And it won't make one bit of difference to me if they live or if they die. When you're king, who cares? You are in charge. I see 
If I were king, I'd have the time that I lack to boss all you little people around. As I sit by my throne on the palace wall, and I destroy good men that look at me sideways seven hours every day. Oh, that would be the sweetest thing of all. If I were the king here, all day long they'd bow and kiss my ring. If I was the Persian king, all would run to praise me. Mordok made the lion and the lamb. You decreed that I should be what I am. But would it spoil some vast eternal plan if I were the king? Hey, man! Hey, man, honey. What are you going to do? You're being pushed around by these Jews. Go to the king and tell him about this Mordecai freak. Because after all, you've got a reputation to keep. Oh, don't worry, Zeresh. I will take care of it. On that, you have my word. And for you to think otherwise would be absurd. I, I'm, I'm outraged to be insulted by a Jew. I have to find a way to kill them all, not just one man. And I will go to Akashweros just to make sure that I can. Whatever you do, Haman, dear, you must do it fast. I'm afraid for your position. These Jews, you should blast. And so he did, the story goes, convince the king of his evil plan to kill all of Persia's Jews, woman, child, and man. Okay, Haman, sir, take care of this matter. Do the Persian thing. Just to be sure, here, I'll, I'm going to give you my ring. Ooh. Don't drop it. Ooh. I'm going to need that back. I must decide on a day to do this genocide. What, what method should I use to help me decide? Haman, as I said before, whatever you do, you must do it fast. I know. I'll cast lots. I'll throw them. One, two, three, and whatever day it comes up on, that's the day it'll be. The 13th of Adar. That's the day. That's the day. That's the day. Or the killing. I know you could do it, Dana, and it will sure be thrilling. We, we have to kill the Jews. We must demand respect. How so? Don't know. Cast lots. That's that. This. This should have been thought of years ago. They'll bow to me. Just wait, they'll see. Jews in Persia? Ah, nobody will even know they were even here. Empty shoes. Some old books. And will they die? Cast the books. At our 13th.
all that you said to do. Rid them once and for all of every single Jew. The news went out and all the Jews began to cry aloud. Esther heard the wailing coming from the Jewish crowd. A servant sent by Mordecai gave her a copy of the law. Esther could hardly believe what it was she saw. A message from Uncle Mordecai asking me to go right to the king. How can I come to him? How can I do such a thing? If I tell him I'm a Jew, then I too may stand to die. But for my people, all the Jews, I really have to try. So Esther thought and thought until the very last, then came up with the idea that all Jews then should fast. So the Jews did not eat or didn't have a drink. I think that's a good idea, I do think. And then I'll go to see the king and tell him of the Jews' plight. I hope that I can do it and not die there of fright. So she fasted and she fasted. And with a sense of dread, she went to her husband, and this is what she said. I know that I should wait till you call me to your side, but I took the liberty because you chose me for a bride. I implore you, if you wish to see me glad, I, I hope that you don't get mad and make me really sad. But I must invite you and your minister Haman with me to dine at a banquet, and there I'll serve you wine. The king agreed, and they both went to Esther's little fete. He asked her the reason, but she would not say yet. That night at the palace, the king had not yet slept. Bring me the books where the royal records are kept. Mordecai saved my life, but there was a major oversight. He was never honored. That just is not right. The next day, Haman came and asked to see the king. He planned on hanging Mordecai, but needed a blessing. Before he could speak his peace, a question the king did ask. I've asked you here to give you a very royal task. I want to honor a hero and give this man his due. Please, Haman, come up with a plan and submit for my review. Now Haman was convinced that the fine man, it was he. He planned a beautiful showing of royal pageantry. Oh, my king, you were right to ask me, of course. Place this honored man upon the king's very own horse and have a fine palace nobleman lead him around, put robes upon him, let him wear your crown. That's great. So Haman, take care of that right away. Mordecai is the man we will be honoring today. What? Mordecai? Mordecai? Oh, I'm incensed indeed. I should have been the one honored. That's what I believe. Oh, I will do what the king has asked me to do. I will do it begrudgingly, and when I am through, I will be convinced even more that my plan for the Jews is right. I hope they grovel and don't put up a fight. Okay, Zeres, let's go and get ready for Esther's place tonight. Then at Esther's, while relaxing with the king, Esther said, The banquet night upon us, their 
there's trouble in the town. I'm upset, all worn out. Go outside with your crown. Maybe she needs more attention. Husband, I'm asking you a question. Do you love me? You're a fool. No, I'm not. Do you love me? Do I love you? After all these years, I've given you clothes, bought you jewels, a beautiful house, made you the queen, supplied the chow. After all these years, why talk about love right now? The first time I met you was on the contest day. I was scared. Heavens, why? I was nervous. I wonder why. But my uncle Mordechai said to trust him, so did I. So now I'm asking husband, do you love me? I'm the king. I know. But do you love me? Do I love her? After all these years, I've sat with her, dined with her, I've been with her. She knows all the palace biz. If that's not love, what is? Can you love me? I suppose I do. Then I suppose I love you, too. It's now the time for strength, my truth Death, the Jews will not be led. We'll use those gallows yeah. and hang Haman instead. Oh, no, no, not my head. Esther then told the truth that Mordecai was her kin. When Mordecai came near, the king let said, him Let him in. This is, he's very brave and also very smart. And his niece Esther is the joy of my heart. You will be my minister. And roll, wear the royal ring. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> but there is a problem to your attention I must bring. I cannot cancel Haman's law, for it bears my royal seal. I know how this sounds, and I'm sorry. You must know how I feel. But I can't allow the Jews to mount a self-defense. I know how it sounds. It doesn't make much sense, but it's the best that I can do right now. The Jews must defend themselves. I'm sure that they know how. Mordecai can pass that rule, and it he can enforce. For he is now prime minister, and has the say, of course. So that is what happened. An awful fight did ensue. And most victorious were the fighting Jew. They rose up against attackers, and in turn did attack. The Jews were ready and surely did fight back. They celebrated their rescue with rejoicing and a feast. They conquered their oppressor, the anti-Semitic beast. And now we have Purim, because Esther said to celebrate, give mishloch manot and hamantashen upon our plate. Sing and dance and make merry for man, woman, girl, and boy, for Purim is a holiday of festivity and joy. Thank you. 
life.
we don't know where he is right now, but we want to thank him just the same. And we want to thank all of you so much for being with us. We want to uh, make sure that you have a very, very delicious commentation provided by none other than Zara. She's not so evil after all. <laughs> They're prune and cherry. Which is her Nutella. favorite. Nutella. And I want to thank all of the kids and all of the, the teachers that helped. You guys were great. Thank you. We'll do it again next year. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Happy Purim, everybody. Happy Purim. Happy Purim.